welcome to Illyrian Cuisine. My name is Anavar, and today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make Glory of Luna Cheesecake. We're going to first start off with our crust. So what we're going to want to do is take some graham crackers. We're going to want about two cups. You're going to want to use a food processor in this one because if we try and crunch it out, in, you know, you can do it in a plastic bag with a rolling pin. You can use a mortar and pestle, but if it's not fine enough, then when we add the butter, it can cause the crust to be a little too dry. So we're going to go ahead and throw in some of the graham crackers. Before we start that, we're going to go ahead and use our full stick of butter into our pot and set to a medium heat so it can melt. Let's go ahead and put the lid on our food processor and start breaking down some graham crackers. Now, if you can look on in here, it does look like we can use a little bit more of a fine grain to this. Once again, it is important to make sure it's nice and fine because we don't want a crumbly crust. We want a crust that's going to hold together our cheesecake. Let's go ahead and put it on. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look now. That looks much better. We have a nice, fine crust. If we shake it up a bit, always important, take your blades out. They're going to cause you to get an accurate reading. So if we shake this up a bit, we can see it's right about two cups. Exactly what we want. We're going to go ahead and take our bowl and dump the graham cracker crust right in. Okay. So now, we're just waiting on our butter to fully melt through. We don't want to overcook it, we just want a nice even melt. Now you will notice this really big pot of water boiling. We'll go ahead and explain what that is later. But, be mindful. Start boiling your pot of water before you start anything else. Looks like we're almost to the point where the butter is going to be nice and melted through. Full and complete. Perfect. Like I said, we don't want to overcook it. It melted through. We're happy. Once again, we're going to go ahead and dump this one stick of unsalted butter right into the graham cracker crust. Do not get it all in there. We're going to go ahead and want to mix it up until it's all fully incorporated. Ah, oh, that wonderful smell. At this point, we're going to go ahead and add our cinnamon. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. This is going to give it a really rich flavor. I like to add it in right when I'm mixing in the butter. I feel that doing it that way gives a lot more of a cinnamony note. As opposed to it being all mixed in throughout, you get those really nice crunchy cinnamon flavors when you bite into your cheesecake. Really gonna like it. Okay, so as you can see, there's still some parts of the crust that are the lighter color. That means that they haven't fully been incorporated into the butter. We just wanna keep working this through, flipping it over, until we're sure that all of the graham crackers have been nice and coated in the butter. That looks good to me. It smells delicious. Okay, so once we are sure that the butter and graham cracker mixture is fully incorporated, we're going to move on to our spring form pan. Very important and almost impossible to make cheesecake without one. Now you can use parchment paper and higher lidded pots and pans if you'd like. I like the classic. So we're just gonna do a light spray of our nonstick spray onto the pan. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little more room. And then we're going to dump the contents of the graham cracker crust right into the center. 
Dang, there we go, get all of it. Perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and spread it out nice and evenly. Next, we're gonna wanna go ahead and flatten out the crust and pack it in so it's nice and uniform across the bottom. I first start out with using the back of my hand to get a general sense of the thickness to make sure we get a nice uniform crust. After you get a nice general area patted down, you want to use the flat side of a cup, measuring cup, rolling pin to go ahead and compress down. Starting from the center, rotating And then out. what we're going to want to do, using the back side of your index finger, is push up against the spring form pan to make a nice raised edge. You want about an inch. This is what's going to rise up and keep the contents of our cheesecake, I believe we are good. Now, we're going to want to go ahead and put this in our refrigerator. It needs to be in for at least 15 minutes. Okay, the reason I want to go ahead and make room in your refrigerator for the crust. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and work on our next. Milk. We're going to go ahead and put our cream cheese in the stand mixer. Now this is about 16 ounces of cream cheese. They usually come in eight ounce packets, so just buy two of those. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and dump the cream cheese into the stand mixer with the paddle attachment. Now it's very important that you soften the cream cheese. It's pretty much a technical way of saying, bring it up to about room temperature, so that way it blends correctly. Very important because if you don't, it can cause chunkiness, and we don't want a chunky cheesecake. We want a nice, smooth, creamy cheesecake. So we're going to go ahead and want to turn our stand mixer on to about low medium speed. Have it run for about one to two minutes until the cream cheese breaks down and becomes nice and silky. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up just a little bit. Sometimes the cream cheese has a tendency to stick to the paddle. So once we get the consistency of the cream cheese sticking more to the edges of the pan than the paddle, we know we're ready for the eggs. We want to go ahead and drop the speed back to a medium low, and we want to break one egg at a time. Okay? It's very important to let each egg fully incorporate into the cream cheese mixture before adding the second one. Now for this recipe, we're using fresh caught tarragon eggs. Now if the tarragon migration hasn't hit your area of Illyria yet, you can go ahead and substitute with cage-free chicken eggs. Flavor is going to be a little different. The con uh, consistency is not going to be as creamy, but it's still going to taste really good. And the stand mixer and scrape down the edges before we add the third and final egg. That lovely texture already starting to take place. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add the third egg. Beautiful. And allow that to fully mix about one to two minutes. Now the people of Blackheart consider this dish to be a very sacred and festive dish. Um, whenever a death or a birth is celebrated, the local family would go into the cloister and request that a confessor make one of these very special cheesecakes. It usually takes the entire span of the day to prepare and serve, with the cheesecake being cut at midnight. Now, as you can see, there's still some little bits of chunks in there. So we're just going to give it a little bit of time. So, we're going to start by sprinkling the sugar in very slowly and gently. Now, once again, think of this sugar as a fine sandpaper, helping to break down any remaining chunks of cream cheese and fully oh, blend yeah. it in. Once again, we're going to take a break, scrape down the edges, 
And I find that scraping off the paddle a little bit helps. So we really don't want any of this to go to waste. It all tastes so good. There we go. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and let it go. Kick up the speed just a little bit for a couple minutes. Okay, we've given enough time for the mixture to fully incorporate itself. We're going to go ahead and unlock and turn off the stand mixer. Give it one final scrape. Then we're going to add our next ingredients. I just want you to focus on that rich, creamy texture. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so to this, we're going to go ahead and add about a pint of sour cream. Easier if I use the correct hand for that. Once again, this is a pint of sour cream. The zest of one lemon. A dash of vanilla. When it says a dash, I just do a capful and a little bit more. I really like that vanilla flavor to come through. And now to add the final now to add the final ingredient that really makes this dish Illyrian is some Luna's Twilight Essence. Just a few drops will do. Beautiful. Now, if you aren't a true follower of, follower of Luna, black food coloring will go ahead and get the same effect. It just won't have the same flavor and the same uplifting experience. Now we want a truly dark cheesecake. So don't be afraid to add just a little bit more. Now, a word to those who are unfamiliar with Luna, her divine essence, much like herself, once it comes in contact with you, it lingers. Okay. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. Okay. Second thought myself, I know you guys saw that. We're gonna go ahead and wanna wash this paddle off. Now if you're making a simple, regular cheesecake, there's no issue in using the same paddle. But we don't want to taint or otherwise disrupt Luna's divine essence. We're gonna scrape the edges. This looks absolutely delicious and beautiful. What we're going to do next is take our crust out of the refrigerator, as you can see, nice and firm, which is what we want. We're going to take the stand mixer, empty the filling into our spring form pan. Get every last bit. Don't want to waste any of it. Okay. 
we're just going to want to evenly spread it over and even. Next, we're going to take the spring form pan and place it on some aluminum foil. Very important, you're very careful with this. The worst thing that can happen to your cheesecake is for it to get water in it. So you want to go ahead and make sure you have enough aluminum foil to wrap around the pan. I recommend using the larger cut of aluminum foil as it gives you much more material to work with. Now we don't need this to be pretty, we just need it to be functional. One thing that I have to clarify, that I learned the hard way once, is uniformity is key. If one area of the cheesecake pan has a little more aluminum foil than the other, the pan tends to lean that way. And that can make a lopsided cheesecake. We're going to hope that doesn't happen here. Now once again, you want to be nice and careful. Make sure while you're doing this, no holes have ripped into the aluminum foil. I like to use two layers, three if I'm feeling really cautious. We're going to go ahead and take our cheesecake and put it, place it in a nice deep pan. As you can see, this pan is lined with a towel. I'll go ahead and explain that later. I hope you all listened to me in the beginning of the video and had your pot of water boiling. Now the water helps the cheesecake cook thoroughly and evenly and keeps the top from cracking or splitting. When we're pouring the water into the pan, we don't want splashback because that could burn or could get into the cheesecake, hence the towel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pour the water into our pan and go ahead and place it in our oven. That towel really helps with any splashback. I want to get about halfway up. Beautiful. We do want it to be floating a bit. Floating means no holes. Careful not to spill it. That would be bad. Now it's going to be, we're going to go ahead and leave it in the oven for about 45 minutes. So we'll be back to take a look and at it. And welcome back to Illyrian Cuisine. As you can see, we have taken the cheesecake out of the oven. And if I do say so myself, it looks absolutely divine. Um, we got the exact texture we wanted. Now, you know, there is a little bit of air bubbles that popped, but I think it really adds to the mystique of the cheesecake. It almost looks like a twilight cosmos captured in a springform pan. Really important, if you notice, it's still floating. There are no holes. Yay, no leaks. Super exciting, no leaks. The best thing you can see is a cheesecake that's still floating. Still float. Okay, yeah, it is. I had to double check. I was worried. But it is. Um, now, if you happen to have had a rip or a tear in your aluminum foil, there's not much you can do at this point. Um, it's still going to taste good, okay? It's still going to be fine. You're going to have a soggy crust, but the flavor is still good. Um, if it, you can either start over or you can enjoy some soggy cheesecake. Anyways. Uh, as you can tell, we kind of left it in our pan full of hot water. We always like to rest it so it doesn't come in contact with the granite countertop. It has to stay in this bath for 30 minutes. So it was in the oven for 45. It comes out still a little bit jiggly if you want to go ahead and look at that. It still jiggles a little. We want that. We don't want it to be overcooked. The jiggling is good because we're going to let it sit and rest in this hot water for 30 minutes. 
So we will be back again in 30 minutes. Okay, and we're back. It's been about 30 minutes that we uh, have let the cheesecake soak in the water. As you can tell, if you zoom in a little bit, no jiggles. It is perfectly set. This is exactly what we wanted. Our final step, and possibly the most difficult step of all, is we now have to wait about four hours. This cheesecake has to set for four hours before we can taste it. I know, I know, that's difficult. Near impossible. But unfortunately, that's just something we're gonna have to do. So you wanna set it in the refrigerator, loosely covered for about four hours. When we get back, we're gonna go ahead and see our little surprise, which is going to be a delicious blueberry compote. We'll see Hello, you then. Welcome back to Lyrian Cuisine. As you can tell by the shirt change, uh, it is the next day. Unfortunately, the cheesecake would have taken till about 1, 2 a.m. to fully set, and I really wanted to sleep. So, now for the final touches of our cheesecake, we are going to be making a blueberry compote. Really yummy, delicious, um, decadent blueberry topping to go with our cheesecake. We're gonna start with about a pint of blueberries already washed so that's about good to that we're going to add the juice of one lemon two tablespoons of sugar and the zest of one lemon we're going to heat that to about medium heat and about now if you look around it says about five minutes i like about 15 for the blueberries to fully break down you want them to be right about when they're starting to break down you don't want it to be mush but you don't want there to be a bite um, now let's go ahead and take the cheesecake out of the fridge okay exciting Now, they did say, I did say loosely cover it. I always put, try and put a paper towel down so it can catch any type of excess moisture so it doesn't ruin the appearance of the cheesecake. Now, what we're going to do is the fun part. Um, earlier I had already run a knife or a plastic spatula around the edges of the cheesecake to help loosen it from the... Uh, form pan. We're going to leave it out for just a couple minutes so it can get a little bit towards room temperature so it comes off a little easier. You don't want to leave it out too much because then the cheesecake might unset. I know for some of you who are watching this, this might be a little confusing. So first of all, um, Illyrian cuisine, the whole thing of Illyria, um, comes from a MMO idea called Chronicles of Illyria. I think we're going to be posting the link somewhere down here. Um, hopefully, wink wink, nudge nudge. So if you need any more information from Chron about Chronicles of Lyra, click the link below. Um, this is going to be a really amazing game. It's pretty much going to revolutionize the way we see MMOs, and really the way we see games as a whole. Um, it's, I mean, it's also going to kind of change the way we even look at playing games. Uh, the ideas and the concept that these people have are groundbreaking and really uh, genre shattering if you look at it. We had the benefit of actually meeting the developers in person and I have to admit the amount of um, passion that they have for this project just emanates from them. You know, there's always these Kickstarters, these pledges that come up um, for these games that always seem so fascinating that never comes to fruition. It, it just doesn't have that push. You have these people who have great ideas, but they don't have the push to make it a reality. And Soulbound Studios really has that push to make this a reality. And they are diligently working day in and day out to create this for us. So, once again, Chronicles of Valyria, look at it. Check it out. Sign up on the forum. Sign up on the website. If you believe in what they're doing, too, buy into it. Go into their store. You, you know, buy packages. Um... There's a lot of really interesting things that you can do in this game. 
that's like I said, it's going to be like nothing else you've ever played before. Now, a little a little personal plug. Um, if you are looking for people to play with, um, our gaming community, Zen Onslaught, will be playing Chronicles of Illyria. We'll be putting our link right about here. Can we do it right here? Can we do it? Can we do it? I'm getting a nod that yes, we can do it right around here. Um, Zen of Onslaught. We're a gaming community that's been around for about 15 years. Um, you know, we, we pride ourselves at being competitive about, you know, looking for server first and world firsts in any game that we play. Uh, for this game in particular, we're going to be a ha we're going to have a very heavy focus on PvX. For those of you who don't know what that means, that means a combination of PvE and PvP, or player versus player and player versus environment. Um, we truly feel that both aspects are going to be very important in Chronicles of Valyria, so we want to make sure that we are competitive and that we excel um, in both of them. Now, we also want to take an idea of, you know, there's the Kingdom of Blackheart. Kingdom of Blackheart is the kingdom that we're going to be under. We're also a part of this, Felleros Alliance. All of this information, of course, will be available to you if you follow the links up here. And okay, down as here. you can see, oh, we're starting to get some steam up from those blueberries. Starting to break down. That sugar and lemon is turning into a little bit of a syrupy mixture. Um, you really don't want to mess with this too much. You're not going to really be seeing much. Honestly, until they start breaking down, and there's that, of course, that one point they get to where, almost that tipping point, where everything just starts melting away, and then you, you know, know that it's done. We're going to go ahead and unlatch the spring form pan. That should just come away. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice little spin for you. And I should just lift it up. And as you can see, oh, thank the good graces, 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 thank the graces. I'm trying to be cl as politically correct as I can here. There's no, abs there were absolutely no But leaks. to make a nice clean cut in the cheesecake, it's recommended that you keep, the, that the knife is heated. Um, obviously you're going to dry the knife before you cut through, but it helps if the knife is soaking in hot water. It helps it cut through it's the amazing. cheesecake cleaner. As you can tell, the level of liquid that has formed has almost, I would say tripled or quadrupled. It's completely, it's almost completely covering the blueberries. This is exactly what we want. Once again, oh, that sound. Once again, we're going to check. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh-huh. A couple more minutes, and these are just going to be perfect. Now, squeeze. Yeah, see, when you bite into that, there's going to be no resistance. It's going to be perfect. I'm going to switch the heat off and move it off the heat. Cooling racks. If you don't have a cooling rack, you know, I baked for years without a cooling rack, but why do you need one? You need one. You, you really do need one. It really helps with anything and everything that you bake. Um, you don't realize how long it actually takes for something to cool until you actually have a cooling rack. And put now, it on. I personally wanted to use a powdered form of her Twilight Essence. Unfortunately, the, uh, uh, the main cloister temple was out. We only had the liquid version. For those of you, like I said, who aren't followers of, followers of Luna, um, I find that powdered food coloring just gives a better color and doesn't impart as much texture issues as um, liquid ones. For cheesecake, it really doesn't matter. But if we're going to be doing something like macarons or some a very, very, very picky recipe, you want to use powdered over liquid. So you can either just pour it right on there, you can spoon it on there, I always like a little more control over how things go. We're just going to kind of drop it on. Doesn't that look delicious? So for our final touches, we're going to go ahead and add some crushed rose petals from roses that grow at the feet 
of the altar of Luna. Add an extra little bit of shimmer. Beautiful. Oh, that looks really nice. After every cut, you're going to want to dip the knife in the hot water. So we cut here and here. So now let's cut here. Okay. So obviously you want to use a spatula. I don't know why I'm using a knife. I had it in my hand and I figured, well, we'll just use it. It's a great idea. What can go wrong? Oh, nothing can go wrong, Jacob. You're so smart at everything that you do. Okay. Well, anyways, there's the knife. There we go. Obviously, you want to use a spatula. So we're going to go ahead and cut into it. And... Now. Well, thank you all for watching. This was how to make the Glory of Luna Cheesecake. Once again, Illyrian, um, an Illyrian-inspired dish for Chronicles of Lyra. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to hit the donate button. Um, all of this is coming from our own pockets because I love cooking. I'm being told that I have stuff on my teeth. Excuse me for a second. Better? better okay so all of this is done because we love cooking um, I love cooking uh, please feel free to comment um, on what dishes you might want to see next like I said donations are just gonna help us get more equipment buy the food that we need to buy to make these wonderful recipes come to life once again this is the pilot please 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 be gentle with your comments if you don't then I really don't care because I don't know you and I probably will never meet you so you guys have a really good night. Once again, this is Illyrian Cuisine with Anavar. Bye now.